Hello everyone, my name is Inma and this is the third video out of four in which I will be showing you how to make an illustration from scratch. On this video we will focus on the following. Adding shadows and the multiply blending mode. Adding lights and the screen blending mode. So let's begin. To apply shadows, the best layer blending mode is Multiply. When you set a layer's blending mode to Multiply, all the colors you paint on that layer will darken the colors of the layers underneath. See the difference between painting on a layer with the normal blending mode and painting on one with the Multiply blending mode. White is the only color you can't use to darken lower layers on a Multiply layer so it can be used as an eraser or to hide parts of the multiply layer. We will see why this is important later. Depending on the colors we apply on the multiply layer, we will be able to create different effects. Just play around with different options and see the result. Now that we know what a layer on multiply blending mode does, we are going to start shading our illustration. I'm going to shade each element separately creating one layer in Multiply Blending mode inside each of the folders I created on my previous video. Make sure that the layer on the Multiply mode is on top of all the other layers within the folder. And don't forget to click on the Clip to Layer Below icon so as not to paint outside the base color. I'm going to start shading using Mapping Pen. I want the illustration to have a cute pinkish tones overall so I'm using pinkish colors for most of the shading. I have a layer marked in red that I use to save colors by drawing a circle using the color I want to save. Later, I will be able to retrieve that color simply by using the eyedropper on it. Make sure to decide where the light is coming from before working on the shadows. In my case, I decide the light source is on the upper right corner of the illustration. I create a new layer in Multiply Blending mode to apply some blush with a soft airbrush. I run into a problem with the jacket. The color I'm using to shade fits the white parts, but not the pink parts because it's too light. In this case, I will follow the next steps. 1. I create a selection from the layer where the pink parts are painted. 2. I click on the layer where I applied the shadows. 3. I select a new darker color. 4. I use the Convert to Drawing Color function on the Edit menu. This will darken the shadows over the pink parts. I don't like the colors I used to shade her hair accessories, so I'm going to change it. This time, I use an even simpler method. I lock the opacity of the layer where I'm applying the shadows and I paint over the previous shading using a different color. Once I'm satisfied with the color I picked, I unlock the opacity of the layer to be able to keep shading other parts on it. The shadows on her shoes need some editing because I want all the white, pink and yellow parts to have a pinkish shades instead of the current blue. So I lock the opacity of the multiply layer and I carefully paint over those parts with the appropriate color. Now it's time to apply some cool effects to our shading. I will go back to the first element I shaded, which is the hair, and I will lock the opacity of the multiply layer. Now I will choose white from the color wheel 
and I will use the opaque watercolor brush that comes with Clip Studio Paint by default. What I do now is to paint over the parts of the shadows with white to lighten the color. I always try to leave some edges intact so as to create a watercolor border effect. I change the size of the brush depending on the part I want to paint over. I'm lightening the color with white, but I can also pick a darker color to darken some parts and get deeper shadows. Because I want this pick to have a very soft and fluffy effect, I will not darken the shadows too much. I repeat this process for the rest of the elements on the illustration. Just as there is a blending mode to darken colors of the layers underneath, there is a blending mode to do the opposite. When we use the screen blending mode, the colors we use on that layer will lighten the colors of the layers underneath. On multiply, white worked as a transparent color, but on screen the color that has that effect is black. You can also play around with colors on the screen blending mode to create different effects. Now I'm going to apply some lights to my illustration. I start by creating a new layer in screen blending mode over the shadow layer for the eyes. Don't forget to click on the clip to layer below icon. I will do the same process for each element where I want to apply lights, and I will apply them using mapping pen. The darker an illustration is, the more you can play with lights, but because this one has a very soft color scheme, adding many lights is not necessary. I switch between pink and yellow colors for the lights. And that's it for now. My illustration is almost done, but it's still missing a few things, like a background and some effects that will make it look prettier. Stay tuned for the next video and see you next time. Bye bye!